This video is brought to you by Bluesound. Click to bluesound.com for $100 off the node 2i through October 31st. So this is the video that I didn't really want to, or didn't really plan on making, but so many of you requested it in the comments of the LS50 Wireless 2 video, asking how do they compare to the Bukat A500? So today we're gonna to tackle what are the main fundamental differences between the KEF LS50 Wireless 2 and the Bukat A500. Now they're both streaming loudspeakers. And the first fundamental difference, which is actually really why I didn't tackle the comparison in the KEF video, is because of the price differential. So the Bukat sell for 4,200 euros. Currently, they're on some kind of introductory special at 3750, but the KEF sell for 2,500 euros. So there's well over a thousand euros difference in price. And I thought, well, if you're shopping for a pair of KEF, you're probably not gonna be shopping for a pair of the Bukats, but like I say, many of you requested this video, so here we are. So both of these loudspeakers are streaming loudspeakers, but with the KEF, the streamer is built into the primary loudspeaker and it hands off to the secondary. And with the Bukat, we stream to a stereo hub, which then streams out to the speakers using WISA. Now, both systems support my favorite holy trinity of streaming, so Rune, Spotify Connect, Google Chromecast, they also do AirPlay and Bluetooth, but only the KEF comes with its own app called KEF Connect. And that for me makes it the much easier to use system than the Bukart. The Bukart has no real app of its own, well, apart from one, we'll get to that later. But the KEF app is Sonos grade, and I use this phrase a lot. And that means that the KEF LS50 Wireless 2 is perhaps the most user-friendly the most welcoming of the two systems. Now many of you, <laughs> many of you have complained bitterly sometimes in the comment section of the LS50 Wireless video that why can't I have the KEF Connect app for my original LS50 Wireless? So I demand to have it. Well, the thing is when you behave like that, you look a bit petulant and also it just exposes maybe your lack of technical understanding. And also maybe I should have explained this better in my KEF video. So the streaming board that sits inside each KEF loudspeaker determines the functionality of the streaming platform and therefore what the app can do. Now the streaming board inside the LS50 Wireless 2 is much, much more powerful than the streaming board inside the LS50 Wireless 1. And that means that the, the KEF Connect app demands more power than the original LS50 wireless can provide. So it cannot technically be backported to the original. I liken this to people who demand Mac OS being able to run on an Apple Watch. It's just technically not possible. As much as you would want it, it's not possible. So that means if you're wholly unsatisfied with the original KEF app, take it to KEF. Complain to them, please, please don't. 
be knocking on my door. I, I'm not Kev's complaints section. Anyway, I'm, I'm sorry to sort of <laughs> insert this kind of grumbly interlude into the middle of this video. Onwards. Another shortcoming of the Kef compared to the Bucart is its lack of USB input. Now that is pretty easily gotten around by something like the Topping D10S DAC, which is a $99 DAC that also behaves as a USB spit of converter. So you go USB out of your laptop into the topping and then coax or Toslink out of the topping into the back of your LS50 Wireless 2. Of course, with the Bucart, we can just USB direct into the back of the streaming hub and then it streams the speakers, easy. Let's talk about high res because the Bucart system is restricted to 2496 PCM because of the Weezer streaming from the stereo hub to the speakers. The KEF go higher. So we can go 2496 with the wireless interlink, 24192 with the wired interlink, but it doesn't stop there because if you wanna go even higher, you have to use MQA, which is mainly available through Tidal. I've written about how this works on these speakers on my website. I'll put the link in the description box below. If you can find the comments box, you can find the description box. It's down there. And if you don't like MQA, you don't have to use it. Now let's talk about sound, because obviously this is what people really want to know about. It's very obvious from listening to the two speakers side by side, as I have been doing for many weeks now, it's very obvious that the Bucart go lower. They go all the way down to 25 hertz. I think Bucart have published a graph of this. Um, if they haven't, I'll put it, a link to it in the description box below, because I have a copy somewhere. Uh, the Kef only go down to 40 hertz which is no shame in a stand mount loudspeaker. It's actually seven hertz lower than the passive LS50 Meta. So know that the active version goes lower than the passive equivalent. So yeah, I mean, it is. this is probably the, the biggest fundamental audible difference between these two loudspeaker systems. The amount of bass, the presence of bass um, with the Bucarts. Now that said, the Kef is contrasted as a much more mid-range focus loudspeaker. It's faster, and I think its imaging is a bit better than the Bucats, just a little bit. And also with the Kefs, I find that their lower treble, upper mids, offer greater transparency and a greater sense of finesse and delicacy than the Bucats. Again, it's a minor difference, but it might matter to some people, which is why I'm teasing out and sort of zooming in on these small differences. And that clarity in the lower treble or the upper mids makes the Kef a more of an exciting loudspeaker to listen to of the two. Um, it's more of a lean in kind of speaker. It, it's more likely to put us on the edge of our seat when listening. The Bucart, by comparison, is more of a sit back and relax and admire, technically, kind of loudspeaker. That doesn't mean it's surgical or anything like that, not at all. But I'd also say that the Bucart, yeah, it has the, the taller of the two sound stages. It just goes up such a long way. But the A500's almost full range take on music means we hear more of the music. It is, for me, the, the technically better of the two loudspeaker systems being compared here. And don't just think that the Bucart gives us more bass because it's actually this sort of springy elastic kind of bass which I really like. So it's the bass is better from that point of view, from a qualitative point of view as well as a quantitative, quantitative, quantitative? Yeah, quantitative point of view.
some of you right now will be asking, well, what happens if I add a sub or two to the LS50 wireless? Because there are sub outs on the back of each speaker. Now, this is the problem when you do videos like my last one and this one, is that the more information I give, <laughs> the more questions that it raises. And at some point I have to say enough. And at some point I have to say, I just don't know, I haven't done that. And in this case, I haven't attached subs to these loudspeakers. I don't know, that's for somebody else to do. Now, even though the KEF app gives us, like the, the Gen 1 LS50 actually, gives us some ability to tune the speakers, bass roll off, treble, just tune it a little bit according to the, the basic acoustic makeup of our room, the Bukart goes a whole lot further in this direction. So we get room correction and we also get master tunings. So in, in more ways than one, the Bukart can be pretty much, not any speaker you want it to be, but it can go off in different directions that the KEF just can't do. And that really means for me, the Bukart is much more of a power user speaker. For somebody who really knows what they're doing, for somebody who's accustomed to all of this kind of DSP adjustments, and then, you know, with the room correction as well. Again, I think that's for power users. And this speaks to my aim with many of these videos, is answering the question, who is this product for? So the A500 from Bukart, for me, is really a power users kind of speaker for somebody who wants to optimize the sound of stand mounts in their room and is comfortable, you know, loading new master tunings with a USB stick or, using an app with room correction with the stereo hub. Somebody who's comfortable with that. And by contrast, by very stark contrast actually, I think the KEF's more user-friendly app makes it much more of a newcomer speaker for somebody who is not comfortable doing all this tweaky geeky stuff. So the KEF is for somebody who only has 2,500 euros. If you don't have Bukart money, you can't spend it on a pair of Bukarts. So, the KEF is for you know somebody on a tighter budget. It's also for mum and pop or mum and dad type customers, you know, who kind of wander into a hi-fi store and go, we'd like something for our lounge room, please, because it's it's much more friendly. And I've got to say, it's the most progressive looking of the two. I mean, if you ask me which loudspeaker I like the look of the most, it's the KEF. I love the way it looks. Now I know not everybody does. I'm giving you my opinion on this as well. But for me, the Bukart is the better sounding loudspeaker. It is the better of the two, but it's also the more expensive. And that means that the KEF LS50 Wireless 2 is the better value. <laughs> Before I implore you to smash the like button and subscribe to this channel, and before I thank you for watching, um, I would like to remind you of some of the constraints of what I do. Yes, I've compared the KEF to the Bukart. No, I have not compared the KEF to either the Klipsch 6s or the new Q Acoustics Active Loudspeaker. I'm not getting the Klipsch, I am getting the Q Acoustics. And so you've got to understand that I don't have access to all gear all of the time. I don't have this sort of big back room sort of tucked away behind Olaf here, full of every bit of gear that comes out all of the time. I've just got these two speakers. That's my focus today. So know that my work is very tightly focused. So asking how does it compare to another kind of speaker? Don't know, don't know, unless it's in the video. And you can search my website to know if I've heard something. You can just use the search box, type in, what you want to ask me about to see beforehand if you're basically wasting your time asking me because if it doesn't return the results, I've never heard it at home. And that's the other point. I only really comment on gear that I have heard at home. These two speakers I've had for many weeks here, listening side by side, long-term listening tests that really tease out details that you don't get from a quick AB. So anyway, if you found this video useful, smash the like button. If you like my attitude to the realities of reviewing audio gear and that I can review far fewer things than I would like and that you would like, 
then please subscribe to this channel and as always thank you ever so much for watching. But overall, I mean, I'm sorry, let me, uh, who knows where this is going to go. <laughs> <laughs> Boo. <laughs> Done.